In this video, we're going to talk about, is this as good as it gets? Hi, my name is Kelly Lunt, and I am an intuitive transformational coach. So most of the time when people get at this point of, is this as good as it gets? It's kind of because they've lost that youthful optimism, to be honest, and <laughs> just get to the point. Um, but life isn't about being young forever. Every stage of life has a different pro and a different con. And so one of the pros of youthful optimism, well, there's a couple, that somewhere around your mid-30s, you just kind of start to lose. And that, number one, is, is your body's health. So think about it. Um, a lot of times society is structured in a way to really support kids' development and just give me that bone Guys, don't come at me in the comments just yet. You haven't heard what I'm going to say. But schools, and so I'm definitely talking about like first world and probably second world countries right now. Um, they have every hour the kids get a break and they get to walk around. They have an, uh, an hour of PE every day. So it's structured in a way so that your body naturally gets the movements that it needs to be at its peak performance, cognitive and physical, mental. Okay, and... Once you get into like the real world and start working a job, you have to create that habit, whether it's work out in the morning and make sure you go on a walk in the evening, or maybe you set a timer so that like every hour you just knock out five push-ups. It's, it's recognizing that you were set up for that type of success growing up and you had other people insisting and kind of demanding that you do it. As an adult, you have to make that intentional conscious choice to do it. Um, so if your body's starting to feel stiff, if, if you can't do the things you used to do, my energy's less, it's not because you're getting older, it's because you're just not making the conscious choice to put a focus on activities and a routine that, that creates that high energy. Okay, and another thing about like youthful optimism is, and this is obviously going to go for people who didn't have like childhood trauma, okay, but this video is still going to help you guys. It's that when you were younger, you had like the two adults and maybe grandma, grandpa, maybe aunts and uncles also just going, oh, do it this way, do this, do this. So you had people that you could like kind of gleefully trust, that blind trust that you get to, you got to grow up naive and with that like, that like youthful ignorance. Okay. And so when you get older, you do have that kind of, oh, is that what we have to do? Oh, is that what we have to do? Oh, is that how we get that result? You have that gung-ho because you have that like loving family helping you, okay? Um, so trauma babies, you're actually a little better off right there because you don't have to face this crash. Um, so what happens though, once you get out of that nest of that family love, is that you know, there are other people who aren't looking out for your best interest. They're either out to get you or they're looking out for their best interest and they're willing to like take advantage of that, that ignorance, that, that, that nativ nativity, naivety, nativity. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Um, and so you gain experiences where you used to be full open and you're like, wait a second, that person took advantage of me. Wait a second. I actually am smart. So when you get that, I am smart, I know stuff. That's when a lot of that, that extra niceness that younger people have, like, oh, no, I'm, I'm just here to learn. I'm just here to do this. You kind of get a, mm -mm, who are you? Why should I listen to you? So it's just reckon that that's literally just a part of life of growing up into the next phase of your life. The next, okay. So you just kind of get these experiences where you're like, no, I'm actually pretty smart. No, I know. And that person took advantage of me. So you get a narrower scope. And so this is what we just want to rebuild. And you can absolutely rebuild that. You know, the theme on this channel uh, lately has been about loving life again, which don't forget, I have an upcoming workshop, January 6th, Love Life Again. Head to my website, kellylunt.com forward slash workshop. I'll, of course, put a link down below. Maybe I'll have the recording for sale later. Who knows? We'll find that out. Um, you have to intentionally rebuild those parts of life. Um, and one more announcement before I give you like what those components are is it really would help this channel if you would give this video a like, if you would share this video to a friend who you think this video would help getting that youthful optimism for life back. Um, it's these referrals that really help these smaller channels grow and I appreciate so much. 
Um, and if you did receive a lot of value from this video, there is the thanks button down below. You can just give me a little tip in proportion to the value that you think that you received. Um, so going back to rebuilding that youthful optimism, when you're like post 30, especially post 35, post 35, you absolutely have to start taking care of yourself if you want to feel good. Um, and so those are eagerness, right? Because they have that, I can do that. But when you get those experiences where you, I can do that, you go all in and then maybe it was a month later, maybe it was a year later, maybe it was five years later and you have that moment where you're like, wait, whoa, I didn't get the result that I wanted. You cut off that eagerness. So it's about now being willing as an adult to, I'm ready to feel eager for the day ahead. I'm ready to feel eager for the week ahead. I'm ready to feel eager for the month ahead. I'm ready to feel eager about living life again. And now I have discernment. So I may not take action on every little idea that comes my way or every little suggestion that someone makes, but I'm ready to, to eagerly live life, explore new experiences. You absolutely have to, point number two, you have to be willing to call new experiences to you and give them a try. And I'm just now doing them with discernment. I'm gonna ask a little questions before I just take action. I'm gonna maybe see how it works out for a couple of people before me. So it's calling forth that eagerness for life again, those experiences that you're gonna look forward to on your calendar. Maybe on your calendar, or maybe just like I like I look forward to having a group of people who just once a week we, we meet up and I look forward to hanging out with them. Guys, it could be go to meetup.com. It could be like a once a week board game group that you go to. That's like, I look forward to playing that game. That's eagerness, guys. So I hope you also heard in there that that's about getting to know yourself, getting to know the new you. Okay, so eagerness and just add in that now you have discernment, but be willing to take the action. Don't just slap things down right away. Go, oh, that does seem curious. Let me see what it's like. Let me read what other people had experiences there. So you gotta, you gotta be willing to take the action with discernment instead of old jadedness. Um, okay, the other vibe of youthful optimism is enthusiasm. So it can't be like, I'm here at this meetup to play games to meet friends, right? You gotta be, oh, like authentic, authentic and enthusiasm. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I don't know anyone here. Oh, I just wanted to get out and play, right? There's gonna be people who are like, oh my God, we're so glad you came out here. We need another person in our game. Come play with us. And it may not be your crowd, but you have a choice right there to maybe they say they shunned you, okay? They're like, uh, no, go away. You have a choice to feel that bad feeling and become that bad feeling. I'm ostracized, no one likes me, or you can you change your language to, hey, that, how eager I was to go there lets me know that I do want a board game group to go to, and that just wasn't my crowd. I didn't feel very welcome. I didn't feel, right? I wasn't welcome. I didn't feel welcomed. When you say I feel, it loosens up the emotions in your body so that they can flow out of you instead of you clenching up, tightening up in your body, and then that becoming a vibration that you're attracting your life at. I didn't quite feel welcome in that group. I, you know, I now have clarity. This is the discernment I was talking about, that I'd like a little more educated group. Your clarity might be, I'd like someone who does not talk about their job and they just like talk about the latest like song so we can just vibe out and bob our heads so that it can just be fun and carefree. So it's, what did you like, what didn't you like? And what didn't you like, you have a choice to become that and clench off emotionally, or you have a choice to, I liked that and now I know I wanna go with a group who where I'll fill blank, blank, blank. Okay, so eager, enthusiasm, and curiosity. I wonder what this is like. I wonder what this gym is like. I wonder what this class is like here. I wonder if there's anything that I can learn. Youthful people tend to be like, older people, teach me, teach me, what do you know? Like they have this as of what do they know that can help me? What, like, what do, what do they bring to the table? <laughs> They have this, oh, who are they? I wanna learn from them. So can you bring that curiosity back, knowing and trusting yourself that if you can recognize the person is shenanigans, if you could recognize that the person doesn't have anything of value for you, if you just recognize that you don't even wanna, like, you just, ah, oh, we are not a match to even talk. Do you trust yourself enough to hold that boundary of, 
hey, it was so great. It, like, it was really great meeting you, but I'm actually feeling called to go over there. So perhaps we'll like say hi later in the evening, but I'm going to go like, and then leave. Right. Cause the only time you feel trapped or is this as good as it gets? It, it's when you're, it's when you're settling a bit and you've lost these vibes and it's when you don't necessarily know how to say no and walk away and, 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 that leaves you open to say yes to something that you do want to do. So you may have learned how to say no. And a lot of, for men, this will hit a little harder. If I just want peace in my life. Um, I'll, I'll give you guys that <laughs> you guys go through a lot. Um, you haven't learned to the say yes to something new, be willing to explore something new and be willing to go a few different times to different board game groups until you find the one that's right for you. That's the action, that's the eagerness, the enthusiasm, the curiosity, being willing to ask questions and quickly shutting things down if it's not right for you without worrying about how will they feel or any of that because if they're a person pulling shenanigans, they should be a no. Um, okay, there was one more. Oh, the big clencher for people who are at, is this as good as it gets? This is where you've essentially You've grown up with a life where you always had so many options presented to you. I already gave you the school analogy. They were teaching you history, sociology, anthropology, chemistry, physics, math, PE, and PE always rotated different sports. So you had a lot of different things thrown at you. The difference is you don't have to go and seek it out. Maybe I want to take a dance class and you're going to have to, I call it the shotgun approach. You're going to have to take a few dance classes. I took a jazz, I took a tap dance, and I realized I like this lady who does this contemporary ballet kind of mix. But I had to take like, I think I took like five classes. Um, three were online, I took six classes. Three were online, three were in person, and then I found my class. I like going to it every Wednesday, 9 a.m. morning, beginner adult dance class. And at the end of it, what I can say, did I feel a little silly, a little stupid going there? Was I worried about being rejected? Was I like, God, I'm not even a dancer. Are they all gonna be good? And I'm the only one that's actually new there. That is normal, guys. And I still win. That's that youthful optimism that you have to get back being willing to be eager about something and being willing to go, being willing to be enthusiastic about something and expressing it, okay? Because all that happens is people just like shut down and they don't want to admit something that will bring them joy because they're afraid of the joy being taken away. So do you want to stay down here because if you get up here and get this happen and someone takes it away, you'll drop back down. Well, guess what? You're right where you started. You're not necessarily worse off. Are you going to shut down and go, they didn't like me, I'm not good for people, or are you going to go, hey, I liked how excited I was to go to that board game meetup, and now I know I need, I need a crowd that's a little bit softer, not quite as vulgar, they're just softer in their communication, they're kinder, they're a little bit more welcome to new people, right, because there's a difference between a group who's been playing together for like 20 years, they might not be all, hey, welcome, come here, they might be, okay, we got a fourth person, you know, but there's going to be other groups where it's all new people and they're like, oh my God, we just moved to the city. We're looking for new friends. Come sit with us. Right? So th this is that deliberate co-creation and it happens, I'm going to say between 30 and 45. And a lot of times this hits people at 35, especially the ladies. <laughs> Guys, it tends to hit a little bit later at like 40, 42. This is just my, my observation from working with clients, guys. Um, okay. Is there anything else? Oh, the at, if, you, if you're hitting that, this is as good as it's get, it's because you're not taking that deliberate approach to like re-explore life with curiosity. Abraham Hicks words this as keeping up to speed with your manifestation. You're just not keeping up to speed with who you are today. And you're trying to recreate something from the past. So it might be something like, oh, well, I really liked dance when I was younger and I liked hanging out with so-and-so. And then when you go back and do those and they don't bring you the joy, it's like, oh, I guess this is as good as it's get. I guess I already lived in my phase of optimism. No, it means that you're a different person now and you're gonna like something new that you just haven't discovered yet. My personal examples, I used to love playing soccer. I used to love it. Now, when I went there, I was. it was like, wait, whoa, this is way too much running. Two, wait, I forgot that you slam your bodies into each other. I'm too old for this shit. I'm not trying to get a torn anything, a strained anything. Um, 
Oh God. And then I tried, so I was like, all right, maybe I just want to do some cardio. I tried the insanity workout and I was like, okay, this is kind of fun, but let me find a little easier hit cardio workout. Um, and then I discovered weightlifting. Weightlifting is my sport guys. It is my jam. I was, it was actually something that I went to the gym three, four times a week. I was consistent. I've been consistent for a year now. And it's just something that I'm like, okay, I can do that. And I like doing it. And I like feeling how much stronger I get. I like how much easier my day to day life is after that. I kind of like, oh, I especially love it when I'm in front of a group of men and they're like, oh, that's heavy. We'll get it. And I'm like, or I'm like, oh, this, <laughs> you know, but hey, but men, I love you. I love it when you carry stuff for us, especially me, but it's just kind of fun when someone goes, oh, that's heavy. And I pick it up like, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, but do you see that guys? If I didn't take the time to go through that awkwardness, of discovering what I like now, I wouldn't have discovered it. And then from then I've been doing it for a year. I was like, okay, I have a solid base level of strength. Now I get to play with it. Now when I go do hit or insanity, it's so much easier. Now when I try to run, it's so much easier. Now, now when I just like I try new things, it's so much easier. And I'm actually realizing that I like going down in weights. I was, I was squatting at 175 and then like weightlifting became a little, it wasn't as fun as it used to be. And it, that means I'm not, I'm doing something wrong. And I realized to me, it's not about how heavy can I go? Cause my body was getting kind of stiff. You know, I couldn't like <laughs> move my arms and stuff. So I realized, oh, I like mobility and strength training. So now I'm adding on like mobility, a little bit of yoga, mainly more like functional mobility, uh, little classes and workouts. But that makes it so that when I'm up in the morning, I'm like, I'm not like, oh my God, let's go to the gym. But I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna do my hip openers and feel so good for the day. When I'm sitting in my chair making my video, my whole back is gonna be sore from my back rows I'm doing. It like, it gives me something, a reason to get out of bed. And that's all you guys are looking for if you're, is this as good as it gets? And the last comment that I'll make on this topic is, especially for those who have um, kids, you have to find that thing for you, especially after your youngest one is, is age seven. It's going to start hitting you when they're like younger, you know, four, they start becoming more independent. They don't need you as much. Um, five is when they are definitely have a mind of their own. Seven is when they have most of their adult brain formed most, not all, but they're definitely far more independent. Um, if you're not letting them go to become independent, that's a whole different issue and a whole different video. But when they're seven and you don't have that, oh, they need me to open their blah, blah, blah. Oh, they need me to do this for them. You can hit this moment like, well, oh, they're not appreciating me. They're not thinking about me. Maybe I wanted to be the one to go to the movies with them. So there is an element of, yes, teaching your kids how to give back, how to be reciprocal in relationships, but there's also an element of you needing to find that new hobby that you like today at this age that you are. All right, I hope the video helped. If you got any questions, write them down below. I love comments, guys. It makes doing this way more fun. And don't forget about that workshop coming up January 6th, Love Life Again. I'll put the link for that down below. Bye, guys. Hope you have a good day.